humans were created by the Anunnaki. They spliced their DNA with that of early primate species that are very related to what you consider Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Hello, and we say good day to you at this moment of your time. We are the Pleiadian Council, and we thank you for allowing this transmission to take place. We ask, in which ways can we be of service to you at this moment of your time? Well, thank you. It's always a pleasure to connect with you guys. So today, I'd like to ask about the Anunnaki. And could we start with, can you describe the physical appearance of the Anunnaki? Humanoid, but with much rougher more scaly sort of skin, eyes a little bit sharper, the nose came more to a beak-like shape, though it did not have that sort of material, cartil the cartilage and uh, this sort of structure with skin, but it looked sharp. They were slightly taller than humans. And yes, they had many different races as well within their own world, variances in skin and texture and color and all sorts of different expressions. They are what you might consider a mixture of ancient Pleiadians with reptilian beings. Semi-humanoid, semi-reptilian. How long had they been around when they came to us? Were they a new race or were they an established race? They were an established race, though their history would be in a sort of beginning as they evolved to become something very different. And were they telepathic or did they use language? They used language. They had many telepathic beings that consciously worked with psychic energy in their world, but they weren't collectively awakened. All right. That kind of explains how a subset could have deceived the other part because they weren't collectively telepathic. Correct. What did they eat? What was their diet? They were omnivores. They ate a variety of plants and animals in their world. And how did they smell? They smelled something that we couldn't mm, fully describe to you, but different from you. You might have a different response at first to many of the smells of di all the sorts of other beings out there that you call extraterrestrials because they're beyond your planet. Your star siblings could all be beings that you get to know and feel acquainted with when you reach a certain level of vibration, we will say. Um, what was the clothing like? They had all sorts of clothing depending on, again, their role in the world. Much like in your world, you have clothing for different occasions. So the Anunnaki who left developed their own sort of culture and customs as well. Okay. Um, how did they discover planet Earth? They were searching for gold and they developed the technology that gave them a radar on where gold stores were. There were many other planets that had even more gold than your world. So yes, we've said many times that they came to mine the gold from your world, which they did, but actually with their experiments, they took colonies of humans, sort of like slaves, and put them on other planets that were easier to mine gold from, but not all of these colonies lasted. But yes, there that's why there is this notion that there are other 
human beings exactly like you out in this galaxy because there are. There are both those that Anunnaki sent on their own journeys and there are those that are the result of the hybrid program. They are almost genetically identical to you. There are some divergences, yes, but you would see yourselves in them very much. All right. Um, did they travel backwards and or forwards in time to find the gold at our planet, or did they not have time travel? The technology oh, yeah. to travel through space inherently bends time in a way, but they were not at the most advanced stages of time travel at that point in so-called time. Do they still exist? Uh, have they carried on? Well, everything that's ever existed still exists, if everything is here and now, which is true, that time is but an illusion that you as humans experience from your perspective. So, of course, they and everything still exist, but they exist in many forms, and there are also the enlightened predecessors, predecessors of the Anunnaki, but there are also other negative timelines of their evolution, much as there is the same as humans and many other beings in this world and others existing simultaneously in this moment. Yeah, that's hard for us to understand, but I think if you keep repeating it, we will we will get it eventually. All right. I want to ask if um, they had many experiments to create a slave race before they made humans. Did they try with other creatures, and what did they create, and what happened? They failed a couple of times, and humans were, in a sense, their greatest success. So what were the other experiments like? They tried to mix their DNA with that of other reptilian beings, and that led to beings like the Draconians and other reptilians that have been a part of Earth timelines in the past. These beings rebelled against them and be used their power to overcome their leaders in a way that humans never did. Humans came to love the Anunnaki and form a relationship with them, whereas when they mixed their own DNA with that of other reptilian beings, these reptilian beings fought very hard against them and became some of the greatest aggressors in their own time and space. And this was all on planet Earth? No, no. This was on other planets that hosted intelligent reptilian beings. So did the Anunnaki have unique or unusual abilities for genetic engineering to create new races? Yes. Are there other species that, that can do the similar things? Yes, many. It's a common practice. So many of the species are, in fact, hybrids created genetically. Correct. We speak of the new hybrid races, but in, you are already hybrids. What exactly had happened to the home planet that made them look for gold, and how did the technology use gold to survive these challenges? Their home planet was moving through a part of the universe where there was a discordant energy and also their planet had a very odd elliptical orbit and so there were periods of their lives in which when their planet was further away from the sun their sun they suffered intense atmospheric disruption that caused climate collapse in their world, similar to what your scientists theorize now of Earth timeline potentials. And it was a part of their own creation, but largely a sort of issue with the planet that they had developed on. And in order to survive and have a better world, they found technologies that would stabilize their 
ozone layer and protect it and balance the energy so that there could be more livable conditions on their planet all of the time. They use nanoparticles of gold and other organic materials that they would eject into the skies, into pockets of clouds that would energetically and elementally balance their environment. And the gold was a crucial ingredient. And they had over thousands of years used up all the gold on their planet, meanwhile developing the technology to travel and find it. Okay, so for a period of time, a secret group was bringing gold back to their planet. Um, but what did they say to the rest of them to hide the fact of how they had created a race to mine it? They did not tell them for a very long time. They kept it a secret. These were already the most intelligent and advanced of their world that crafted this sort of a plan. It was a secret society within their world. And hence, the idea of secret societies in your world is still connected with the Anunnaki because this was a part of their consciousness that they intentionally imprinted on human consciousness. That is amazing. That is amazing. So we have the traits that resulted from their secrecy and elitism. Yes. Spaceship and Babel, we are guiding through the stars on a five year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars. A celestial encounter on a future Noah's Ark, and you will hear us coming through a whisper in the dark. Whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok close behind me as we try to disembark here. Yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi as we whisper in the dark. Oh, my God.